we are going to use Minitab 17 to create some bar graphs. And if you look at the data I've got here, it's actually, if you've already watched the video on pie charts, you're going to say, hey, Eric, this is the same data. It's even called piecharts.mtw. Yeah, I'm very clever that way, reusing the same data set. So remember, my first one here is 60 care ratings. Patients have rated how well they felt their care was. And we already made a pie chart out of it. But now I want to make a bar graph out of the same sort of thing. So I'm going to go to graph, and I'm going to go to bar chart. Now, much like in our pie graphs, pie charts gave us choices as to how to make them. Similarly, bar charts will. If I click on this arrow, you see I could do a count of unique values. I could do functions of a variable or values from a table. Well, here I have all 60 individual care ratings, fair, poor, good, excellent, listed. So I'm actually going to count each of the unique values, much like I did with the pie chart. I'm making a simple bar graph. That's fine. And I'm going to say OK. And I have to tell it, what is it I'm counting? What is the categorical variable that's being counted over and over and over again? Well, the categorical variable in this case is care rating. So I'm going to double click on care rating. And now I will say OK. There we go. I have a bar chart. Now, there are elements of this bar chart that I could make better. For example, I might not want this to be care rating. I might want this to be. I double clicked it. Sorry, I should have told you what I was doing. Double clicked it so that it would open up this dialog box. I highlight the words care rating and maybe I want to say how patients rate their care and say OK. Maybe I want to change the title to something similar to that. So I double click the title, opens up the box. I can change this to patients rate their care on ward 7 and say OK. I could put numbers above these bars, much like I did in the histogram, if you guys have already watched the histogram. So maybe I want to do that. I will do that by adding data values. So I will show you. I'm going to right click anywhere in the graph and go to add. And I want to add some labels to my data. So data labels. And I'm going to use the y value labels. The height of the bars is how high they are on the y axis. So that's good. I'll say OK. And it puts little numbers. There's boxes around them. You can't see them right now. But if I do that, you can see 7, 18, 24, 11. You can see how many there were of each type. The other thing, I could change the colors of the bars. I mean, I think the blue is lovely. But maybe orange would be lovelier. So I double click the bars. And I say I want to change the fill pattern. Custom. How about this nice, beautiful, light orange? Oh, that makes the graph so much harder to look at, doesn't it? No, I'm just kidding. But be careful about colors. Don't make it so that it you know, strains somebody's eyes to look at it. All right? So there are many things I can do to alter my graph. Just like with pie charts and histograms, when I have it the way I want it, I'm going to save it probably as a JPEG so that I could use it in Word, PowerPoint, Blackboard, anywhere I want. And that would go the same place. File, Save Graph As, and then instead of I'll call it whatever name I want, but instead of a mini tab graph, I would change this to a JPEG and say save. I'm not actually going to save right now. I'll just cancel that, but that's how I could do it. Same as we did with the other graphs. All right, let's go back. We've made a bar chart one way. You remember we also, if you've already watched the pie charts video, we talked about these scans. Now I work in radiology, and I'm, I have 314 scans of different types, and I want to make a bar chart to show the different kinds of scans that were ordered. So I'm going to make a bar chart by going to Graph, Bar Chart. This time, though, I'm not counting unique values because I have summarized everything with a table. So I'm going to tell it that I'm getting values from a table. This can be a simple bar chart. It's fine. I'm going to say OK. And it wants to know what's the graph variable. In other words, how tall are the bars going to be in the graph? Notice it only gives me one possible choice, because it won't let me put categorical variable in, text variable in as a graph variable. It'll only let me put numerical variables in. So that helps a lot. It's got to be number. And then it wants to know, what's the categorical variable? How are the different categories broken apart? Well, in this case, it's the different kinds of scans, which is column 4, scan. So I'm going to double click scan. And I'm going to say OK. And here we go. We see it's got the different kinds of scans. They're in the same order that I wrote them in. They didn't change them to alphabetical order. If I wanted them in a different order, I would have had to write them in a different order. And it's got the number. It's got a terrible title that I could click, double click it to fix. 
I could double click the kind of scan and fix that and give it a better title and so on. Let's do it. Let's change the title. I'll double click the title chart of number. We're going to say number of different types of scans ordered in April. Say OK. I could say scan instead of just calling it scan. I'll double click it and I'll say type of scan ordered type of scan ordered and say OK. I could change number if I wanted to, although number's probably fine. I could make little numbers appear above here. I could give it a subtitle that told you n was equal to 314. I could change the colors of the bars. All those tricks we've learned on other graphs, we could use on this one. But maybe I'm perfectly happy with this. I could save this one as a JPEG and be done with it.